Ministry of Standing to receive the formal Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Christine Banks. I would like to emphasise that this is a key meeting. Can I therefore request that everyone present, including the public, treat this meeting accordingly, which will enable the business to be dealt with, with affectionately. The use of social media and film for the important proceedings is permitted during the council meeting. This does not extend to film the members of the public and anyone wishing to film the proceedings are also particularly directed to the very sensitive issue of filming children without their express permission of their parents. <clears throat> I invite nominations for the Office of Lord Mayor for 2019-2020. Mayor Anderson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, can I move the following, please? That Councillor uh, Anna Rodley be elected Lord Mayor for the ensuing year 2019-2020. Thank you for that. Mayor Anderson. Thank you Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, um, this is a great day for uh, Councillor Rodley for Anna, but I think it's also a great day for the city. Um, as we uh, elected in the position of Lord Mayor, the first ever uh, black woman and black person uh, in uh, our city. It's a great historic day and one that we in the Labour group are really proud of. Those of us that know Anna know that she's uh, served on the council since uh, 2006, representing the Princess Park Ward area. Uh, she was born and bred in Liverpool. Anna has also been a leading light in championing the city's diverse communities for many, uh, many years. She wants to be and always has been a role model for the black community and to encourage people uh, to strive to achieve their goals, whatever your background and regardless of where you're from. She's proud of where she's from and she's proud of her heritage. And as we're in business and within community development and leading community development initiatives for over 25 years. And in 2012 she made political history by becoming the first councillor to address the floor of the United Nations in Geneva. She has been and still is a key player in Operation Black Vote, a scheme to get more black people into politics, more BAME community representatives into politics. And as a consultant for Migrant Workers North West, she's championed and does champion the rights of the diverse communities within the North West. I'm delighted to announce as a result of uh, both myself and Anna collaborating with Simon that we are going to introduce another cohort for Operation Black Boat within the next couple of months that will encourage uh, 30 main community members to try to become involved and engaged in, in local politics. This city has always been a welcoming uh, city and it celebrates the diverse cultures and communities that are within it. And it has always celebrated uh, and those communities and will continue to do so. To do so. I mentioned that the Labour Party, the Labour Group in our city is so proud of her and achievements and the fact that she's going to be uh, installed today as our new Lord Mayor. It is, without a shadow of a doubt, fully and truly deserved for her hard work and efforts. And I know 
she will be a tremendous ambassador for our city, for all of our city, uh, over the next 12 months. And I look forward to working alongside her to promote and achieve all what we would expect as the first citizen of our city. Congratulations, Anna. You thoroughly uh, deserve this accolade. And as I said, on behalf of the Labour Party, but of the whole city, congratulations.
we, we, uh, we, we, we had a good buffet, even though uh, your predecessor couldn't make it that day. Um, but on a lighter note, uh, can I also say, I don't think anything should be uh, anything than slightly nervous about being the mayor. This is the reason those of us served on that planning committee will know how feisty and um, how strong her views are. And sometimes you'd be on the same side of the fence, and other times not. So there was absolutely no doubt uh, what Anna thought and what, what Anna thought was best for the city and what Anna thought was best for her constituents. And I think that's actually quite a very credible basis of anybody being the Lord Mayor. That strength of character, that determination to see what is right is done. And we look forward to, on behalf of the Liberal Party, the constructive opposition, uh, we look forward to you being the Mayor, and we look forward to you visiting our community in Tubrook. God bless you in your work. Are there any, any more nominations? I suffered from a debilitating illness. 
I suffered from acute epilepsy. I attended a school that educated children who suffered from many illnesses. From asthmatics to children born profoundly deaf, those suffering from degenerative diseases, and those suffering from terminal illness. This is where my journey into inequality began. I would learn to navigate my way around illness and death and encountered many forms of discrimination and bullying along the way. I spoke out for the little voices, too ill or too timid to speak for themselves. Fucked all the boys who thought it was fun to pull off the children's wigs who had undergone chemotherapy and said goodbye to those who lost their balance. The biggest lesson that I learned is that we are all inextricably linked and if we, fall, if we fail in one area, then we fail in all. Society is judged by how we treat our most vulnerable, those silenced by fear of oppression and those who are unable to speak for themselves. I think it's fair to say that I've gained a bit of a reputation. Often referred to as Princess Pushy, a badge I secretly wear with pride. I'm known for being formidable, tenacious, and a huge pain in the posterior. However, it is not called the struggle because it's easy. This year you will see a different side of me. I will be doing more. I know that sounds hard to believe, but I will, or I will attempt it. I'm changing my tactics, digging deep into my toolbox, or should I say my vanity case. I'm trying on the charm offensive in order to win hearts and minds. I look forward to working with my charities, the months ahead and the new partnerships and friendships I will form and also to raising lots of cash for my weary causes. My charities are the Anthony Walker Foundation, which is a local charity established in the aftermath of the racist killing of 18 year old Anthony in 2005. Anthony Walker's, purpose, uh, Anthony Walker's Foundation purpose is to promote racial harmony through education, arts and sports, promoting the celebration of diversity and personal integrity, and the realisation of potential of all young people. Services provide include directly supporting anyone experiencing any form of actual or perception of hate crime, and the delivery of educational workshops to challenge prejudice, discrimination, and contributing to build safer, stronger, cohesive communities. My second charity is Amadoudou's Women's Refuge. Amadoudou is a trailblazing refuge set up in 1991 in Liverpool to provide temporary accommodation and a range of services to meet the holistic needs of women and children fleeing domestic violence. The organisation management and staff and volunteers are representative of diverse communities. They are all special services in their society, prioritising the needs of women, providing family support, health and wellbeing activities, childcare and education opportunities before families resettle into new homes. They work tirelessly to empower women to live happy and independent lives from fleeing, violence and abuse. And we do, do have expertise in supporting women with complex issues they play a key role in shaping the delivery of Liverpool strategies for violence against women and girls and campaigning nationally for justice for women and the prevention of abuse. My third charity will be LCR Pride Foundation. The LCR Foundation aims to position the Liverpool City region as the most LGBT plus friendly region in the UK. They do this by highlighting the daily barriers of the LGBT <coughs> Trust people living in and visiting the region face, and by creating an inclusive culture where people feel they can fully participate and contribute. Utilising the reach of the flagship event, Pride in Liverpool, the foundation is waiting across the region to extend the message of Pride beyond the annual event and into the wider communities through awareness, campaigns, and influencing policy. To support and celebrate communities that do not typically feel represented by Pride, particularly trans, bi and they members of the LGBT plus community. My final charity is Merseyside Somali Association. MSCA was established over 40 years ago by the Somali seamen to address their needs in areas of employment, leisure, housing and health. 
For much of this time, the importance of, our service, of their services have been acknowledged by the City Council and other regular funders through continuous improvement plans and essential services. They deliver welfare benefit advice, signposting, housing advocacy, health and wellbeing, awareness programmes, leisure and social activities, English and educational programmes. They are a crucial source of information and support within the community, providing a much needed vital lifeline to local people who would otherwise have to, would, who would otherwise not have the support that they need to deal with issues and challenges that they face on a daily basis. As well as the traditional plant base of Somali communities, over the last five years they have seen widened participation and taken up services. Those are my charities. I think to conclude, I think everybody knows my commitment to equality, human rights and anti-discrimination work. I hope that this coming year we'll see that we can work together in full partnership, not just looking at equality, but more importantly looking at economic equality for all. As the great man said, there's no point in opening up the coffee shops if you can't afford to buy a cup of coffee. Thank you. 